So people asked me what it was like personally to realize that we had discovered gravitational waves. And my answer will be my answer. I'll, I'll give it to you. But I think you have to realize that it's a very personal thing. People react differently. Some of my colleagues, it was truly a eureka moment. You know, they all of a sudden discovered it. For, for me, I've worked on this for a long time, 23 years. So it's a long, long, long time. And uh, when we saw it, it was beautiful, of course. But uh, my first concern was, how are we being fooled? Uh, what are we doing wrong? Uh, all, all the conservative things. So I didn't have the eureka moment. And we had two big issues right away. One was, uh, this was a brand new detector. And maybe the new detector invented these things itself in some way that would fool us. We had no experience running it to see that they, uh, we don't just find these by accident. Uh, so we had to run some length of time. Everybody agreed with that, but that for me was very important. Uh, the second is an interesting one, which is did somebody somehow poison our data, put something in our data that made us look like that? And uh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, obviously, you don't, we don't have a suspect, but if we're going to go forward with the detection and then find that some, somebody got into our data or into our instrument and did that. So we had two exercises right away that each took a month. One was to see that there wasn't some rogue event, somebody putting it into our, our stuff. And we could prove that because of something that we hadn't planned exactly, but because we have two detectors that are widely separated, and when the data is taken there, it's separated and recorded, but then it's all brought together at my institution at Caltech. And at Caltech, once it's there, you can put something in, but it's hard to do it in these two sites separately, or at least we could follow that. So we followed the signals back to the sites and proved that it wasn't that. The second one, we just ran the instrument for a month and saw no evidence that the instrument generated funny things. So the combination of those two made it fine. I still didn't have my eureka moment. And the reason is maybe I'm a little older than some of my colleagues. And I've seen too many times where people have uh, thought they discovered something and they didn't, especially if they've only seen once. And so I was very, very reluctant for us to go. If there, if there was one, there had to be more. So I was kind of on the side that we should wait until we see more. Uh, but after we looked at this, it, it was so beautiful. After another month, after the second month, I became convinced that I couldn't resist, that I had to go along, although I, I wasn't happy, maybe totally, that, that we should publish this. That was the, around uh, late November of the same year where we detected it in September and November. And we made a plan to write it up. We had done all the analysis to write it up and publish it. And we called the journal that we published in, which was Physical Review Letters. And they have a special way to referee very quietly and quickly. And uh, we had warned them. And so we were going to do that. And that was early December. We wrote it up. We had the write-up, you know, a 1,000 people agreeing on what it said and so forth. And then we called up the journal. We had called them before and said, OK, we're ready to give it to you. And they said, it's too close to Christmas. And be, so we can't do it over Christmas in this special way. And so they put us off until January. And it turns out that we saw the second event on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. And uh, of course, that convinced me. But I have to also admit that I had a sigh of relief at that point, that I was absolutely convinced. So I still had doubts if I had a sigh of relief. So that was my personal experience, a little bit on the conservative side.